In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can use commit and reveal in your Solidity smart contract. First, let's understand the idea of a commitment scheme. The basic idea is that we want to allow users to commit to a chosen value, but keep it secret from others. And then at a later time, the user can choose to reveal the value that was committed. This has many applications, for example, in gambling, auctions, and voting. In the case of a voting smart contract, you want to allow people to vote, but you want the votes to be kept secret because if people are able to see what other people are voting for while they're voting, that may influence the way that they're voting. Therefore, in a voting contract, you probably want to allow people to commit a vote, and then after some time period has elapsed, you will decide that you're no longer going to accept the votes, and then you're going to reveal the votes and tally them, and then decide on the winning candidate. You may remember that in 2017, a scientific institution held an online poll to let users decide the name of this new scientific vessel. The winning candidate turned out to be named Bodhi McBoatface. In the smart contract that we're going to create, we will allow users to enter a name as their vote. And then later on, after all the votes are committed, we can allow the users to reveal the name that they have submitted. In cryptography, SALT is basically a random input that you're adding when you're performing a hash. And this makes it more difficult for people to guess or to figure out what the original value was that was hashed. I won't go into detail here, but you're definitely welcome to read more about it online. Commit and reveal has two stages. The first stage is called commit. So we're going to let the user take their vote and then add some random salt to it and then take a hash of that. Then the user is going to call commit with the hash. And then our contract is going to store that hash and map it to that user. Later on during their reveal, then that user can call into the reveal function and they're going to reveal the actual vote and the actual salt. Our contract is going to verify that the hash of the vote and the salt matches the hash that was stored by that user. If it matches, then the contract is going to tally that vote and it, or basically accept it. So for our voting contract, we're going to allow the users to choose a name in their vote. So from the user's perspective, they might choose a name, for example, Bodhi McBoatface and the random salt. So they're going to hash those two numbers, and then the hash is going to be some random output that looks like this. The user can then call the commit vote method that's exposed by the smart contract and pass in the hash. And then the smart contract is going to store that hash and associate it with that user. And then later on, when we're ready to tally the votes, then that user is going to call the reveal vote method and pass in the actual name of what they had voted for, as well as the, as well as the random salt that they used to generate the hash. In Visual Studio Code, I have a hard hat project. So I have a folder with my contracts, a script for deployment, as well as a hard hat config.js file. So let's focus on our commit reveal smart contract. Our smart contract is going to use two mappings. The first mapping, vote by user, is going to store the hash that is submitted by each user during the commit phase. So this mapping is going to use the address of the voter as the key, and the value is going to be the hash, which represents the vote and the random salt. We are also going to have another mapping for vote counts, which will keep track of how many users have voted for a specific name. Our voters will be submitting names as their votes. So the mapping will be from a name to the number of people that voted for that name. Our constructor is not going to do anything. It's just printing out a statement here. During the commit phase, the voters will be using this commit vote message to pass in their hashes. The voters will take the vote and the salt and then pass that through the ketchak256 hash to get the hash output and then pass it to commit vote. Because the vote and the salt are running through the ketchak256 hash, the output is just going to be random garbage and therefore the vote is secret. So during the voting phase, it's possible for voters to monitor the blockchain and see the other secret votes of the other voters. However, because it's garbage, voters will not be able to tell what names other people are submitting for their vote. During the reveal phase, then the voters will need to use this reveal vote method. The voters will pass in their, their actual vote as well as the random salt that was used. Then the smart contract is going to use Ketchak256 to calculate the hash and then check if that hash matches the hash that is stored for that user. If the hashes don't match, then there'll be an error saying the vote and the salt do not match. Otherwise, we're going to increment the tally for that vote to demonstrate that another person has voted for that name. Lastly, we have this helper method, which is going to calculate the hash for us. 
Given two strings, we're going to call catch out 256 on the two hashes. We're going to expose this so that I can show you what the output looks like and then figure out what our hash is and then commit that hash to using the commit vote. I'll be deploying onto the ringp testnet. So I have a .env file and I'm using hardhat etherscan so that we can verify the smart contract on etherscan and interact with the smart contract through etherscan. So first let's compile our code. Now let's deploy the smart contract onto rank B. In etherscan, we can see that the contract was created. If we wish to interact with our contract through the etherscan UI, then we have to verify the contract. So I'll use hardhat to verify the contract. Now that the contract is verified, we can interact with it using the etherscan UI. So now in etherscan, the contract is verified and we can see our source code and we can also perform read and write operations on the contract. In the read contract, for example, I can call the get hash method and I can also look up the mappings, vote by user and vote count. So let's see what the hash will look like if the name we're voting for is Bodie McBoatface and the random salt we're using is Hunter2. So the result of the hash is this hash here. So we can copy that and then use that to commit our vote. And now I will write this in the commit vote. First, I have to connect to Web3, so I'll connect to MetaMask. So now that I'm connected, I can vote. So the vote has been committed and I can view this transaction. So after about a minute, we have one block confirmation. So now I can go back to the read contract and see the votes by user. So let's see the vote by user for my account. I'll copy the address here and let's see what is stored in the mapping. And we can see that the hash is now stored and associated with my address. Now let's see if we have any vote counts so far for Bodie McBoatface. So if I enter that string, currently there are zero votes for it. So let's pretend that the commit phase is over and now let's do the reveal. So I go back to write contracts and now I have to do another write to reveal my vote. So here I'm going to pass in Bodhi McBoatface and I'm also going to pass in the random salt, which was Hunter2. And now I'm going to write this. So now the reveal vote transaction has been confirmed. So now let's check our vote tallies. So here I'll go to vote counts and now if I query Bodhi McBoatface, now we can see that the vote count is one. So our smart contract took in the name that we voted for as well as our salt and hashed them together and compared that to the hash that was originally found during our commit phase, which was this hash. If we look at the transaction history for my address, we can also see the commit vote and the reveal vote transactions. Obviously we could have made this voting smart contract much more realistic and more complicated. For example, we could have used timestamps using the block time to have separate commit and reveal phases. For example, we could make it so that you could only commit a vote during the commit phase. And then after that time period has elapsed, the commit phase is over and you can no longer commit votes. And then you can start revealing votes. And we could have made it so that you can only reveal a vote after the commit phase has ended. But to keep things simple and to focus on the catch 256 hash, I left that part out. If you learned something from this video, please give a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.